Now this um, geranium uh, is one of our favourites here in the school. We've got lemon scented geraniums, orange scented geraniums, uh, kind of minty scented geraniums, all sorts of different scented geraniums. This one actually is called Cola Bottles and um, <clears throat> it's got the, the, the subtle hint of um, Coca-Cola. Let me just bring you in close, have a, have a deep, deep sniff. Um, let's see how, how wonderful YouTube is. One, two, three, breathe in. Did it work? Hmm, well, take it from me. Um, it does have a, a slight um, hint of um, cola to um, the perfume. And uh, more importantly, perhaps, um, uh, it, um, it's got very attractive flowers and just look how bushy. Oh, oh. <laughs> Almost fell over. <laughs> uh, the scent was stro so strong. Um, so really bushy, um, really bushy plant. That's scented geranium cola bottles. This one just behind has got a different kind of shape. Um, the way that it grows, a very strong lemon scent on this. Not so much in the way of flowers, um, but it has got an attractive little flower. But um, very strong. You must better smell that, surely. Oh, ah, fantastic. So, um, you may have seen um, our previous video where we showed uh, these uh, scented leaf geraniums right at the start of spring and we cut them right back down hard uh, into the, um, the centre of, um, of the pot there so there were just a few kind of stumps left we, um, with a couple of leaves on and we, uh, we gave them some, uh, some feed, some fertiliser and some tender loving care and uh, Boy, have they grown! And uh, here's uh, here's the other couple here that had the same uh, same treatment. Lovely perfumed leaves on these. Let's have a quick sniff. Oh, beautiful! So, as promised in that previous video, we are going to take some um, some cuttings. Now, at this time of the year, we're uh, we're into uh, late August. Um, any time in the summer really is a good time to um, to take uh, take cuttings, and I'm going to snip just this piece here off. Come here, mate. Oh, uh, eat. so you can see that um, where I've um, where I've cut there, um, I've left a little kind of just a tiny little stump there um, above that node, above that leaf where the leaf joins the stem, you remember that's a node and there's potentially a new shoot ready and waiting to come out to come out of that uh, gap. I can just see the dormant bud tucked, um, tucked in there. Now we've got another another shoot here that's just, it's got a flower bud on the top there. Um, can you see him? Now I tend to avoid those um, because um, the flower can cause you, or the flower bud or flower can cause you problems um, but in case you've got no choice, let's just have a little look here and I'll show you what you need to do if you're going to be doing one um, with a bit of flour on. So let's take him into the, um, into the little potting area and we'll show you what to do, the next step. So the fir first thing I do is give him a quick dunk of water because as soon as he's disconnected from the plant he's, um, he's going to get stressed. So there's, uh, there's our cutting. Now we don't want the flower, so we're going to take that flower off, get him out of the way. What can happen is as the flower dies off, um, it can rot and that can actually, the rot can spread to the stem. And I've just noticed, oh I love him, there's another little flower bud just there. So I'm going to take him off as well. Sorry mate. Um, now, got to remember that um, leaves actually lose moisture. And really what we want to do at the moment, oh, come back. What we want to do at the moment is enable this, this cutting to survive a few weeks of almost dormancy. Um, we're going to bury about that much of the stem. So beneath my finger and thumb there, this portion here is going to be beneath the compost so that this, this bud here, this node, is going to be beneath the ground um, so we can encourage some um, 
uh, some roots from there and uh, just a cup. Do you know what? I'm even going to take one of those leaves off there. There we go. Because there's no roots on this little cutting, there's no, well, it's going to be a struggle for this plant to actually absorb water and uh, the more leaves it's got, the more water it's going to lose through those leaves. So just leaving it with one there and a couple of little kind of um, leaf buds there is probably all it needs um, apart from some damp compost and some fresh air um, to enable it to go into a kind of a, a state of semi-dormancy while it develops the root system. And once it's got the root system beneath the ground it will then be able to absorb the water and the nutrients from the from the compost and it'll start to put on some new uh, some new leaves um, up above there. So there's our one cutting. These guys, sorry, are going to go into the compost and uh, that little fella there is going to go into the um, into the pot. So here's our first cutting we took without the flower buds on so that's much easier. We're just going to take off these leaves and that one there as well. Compost, compost, cutting. There we are. So we've got two cuttings. Now we need some pot, uh, some pots, and some compost. Okay, so here's our um, our compost, which is a, a blended compost. It's got a reduced amount of peat in there, which kind of you know we're trying to do our bit for the environment. So less peat. Um, they've added um, recycled green waste and and kind of um, shredded bark, and also a soil-based um, compost in there. John Innes compost. So it's got a blend of three or four composts in there. Less peat, but it's quite good for cuttings. But with cuttings and seeds, I like to get a bit of um, extra sand in there. So got a bit of sand knocking around here, and we're just going to mix in some sand like this because um, seeds and cuttings need to have good drainage. Um, bearing in mind, of course, that um, they haven't got roots, so they can't suck the water out of the compost. And there is a danger that if you have compost that gets too wet, the bottom of the um, the cutting will rot off, or the seed, if it's a seed um, um, compost um, seed sowing, the, the seed will rot off. So it's getting this balance right between having sufficient moisture in that compost to keep the little cutting alive until it develops roots, um, balancing that against not having it too wet so that it um, rots off. That's nicely mixed. There, we're ready to put the cuttings in. Let's get a little pot. There we go. We've got our pots. These are about, I think these are about 10 centimetre uh, pots here. A little bit of a tap down, don't push it down, it needs to be nice and nice and loose, this compost. And here's our cutting. Um, I'm going to give it another little um, dab of water in there. And then in he goes, making sure that we bury that dormant bud. Perfect. Just a gentle, um, f gentle firming of the compost. Um, around there just to ensure that we get a good um, contact between the compost and the, um, the the stem and then we'll quickly do the other one and go to the compost brush it off little tap down in goes the cutting just a gentle firm there don't press it just gently firm it now, of course, these guides need um, a little drink. Uh, I'm going to keep them uh, here in this kind of slightly shaded um, greenhouse so they get a little bit of warmth um, and a little bit of protection from too much uh, sunlight because if there's too much sunlight, they'll be losing too much moisture through the leaves and then they'll get stressed. And you just kind of, as I say, we've got to walk that line between just about keeping them alive, um, keeping them moist enough, um, but not too wet. So let's get a bit of water on those now. There we go. So, a little bit of a sprinkle of water on there, and on there. Oh, he's loving that. Let it soak in. Um, don't forget that dry compost repels water. Wet compost absorb it, absorbs com um, wet compost absorbs water. So, we're just going to let that soak in, and then give it another drink. There we go. Oh. 
you can generally tell from the yeah from the weight of the um the compost whether there's enough moisture in there they feel nice and heavy um, any excess can um, can run out of uh, the bottom there so here we are we're doing this um, in August I would imagine that by <clears throat> end of September maybe early October uh, these guys will have rooted in we might get a few new leaves as we go into the winter we'll need to move them into um, a slightly a very lightly heated uh, greenhouse these are actually quite hardy uh, that these perfume geraniums they'll take a little bit of frost uh, but um, we're going to keep them in the um, in the greenhouse over winter and by next spring I would imagine that they're going to be kind of so big maybe um, 10 centimeters uh, high by three or four centimeters across and um, I would hope that by May June we'll have a couple of flowers and uh, we uh, the, the pupils will grow I've got I've done two here we'll, we'll get maybe 50 of them um, planted up with the pupils and when we have the um, the summer fate next uh, next June or July we'll have lots of lovely perfume geraniums to sell to the um, to the parents um, and that sense of achievement of, of, of making little baby plants from uh, um, these clever little cuttings so that's the way we do it um, you can use uh, rooting powder um, if uh, some of the plants that you're trying to take cuttings off struggle um, you know you struggle to get any roots on them you can try rooting powder and you do exactly the same thing as we've done here but then before you dip the, the put the, the cutting in the pot you just dip the cutting into some rooting powder to coat the stem and in into the, um, the compost it goes we try to use as few chemicals as possible here at the school so we're not going to use um, the rooting powder and to be honest we've we found that these guys root easy enough uh, without uh, rooting powder now there's also other things um, I've heard that if you dip the um, the base of the cutting in honey or in um, uh, um, there's a few other things apple, apple cider vinegar I think um, I've never tried any of those things so I can't tell you whether they work or not but um, I'm me personally I, I prefer to just give them a chance to do um, to do their thing naturally and, and avoid use of any um, additives so we'll keep you posted and show you how these th these guys look um, by the spring